Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the City of Longview, we'd like to welcome you to the planning and zoning meeting. We appreciate the people in the audience and uh, appreciate you giving your time to attend the meeting today. At this time, we're going to ask for the invocation to be given by Heath Hamberlin and be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'll stand, please. Join me in bowing your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to gather here today. Um, we, we thank you for the, the cooler weather and the fall season, dear God, and we just uh, pray that uh, we're, you, you help guide our hand uh, on the decisions uh, that we make here tonight and that uh, we make decisions for the best interest of the city and, and the people of Longview. Dear God, we just uh, thank you for uh, the opportunity to be able to meet in person. We ask that you uh, just help us have a, uh, a, a good meeting tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go join me with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. The next item is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting in September. Have the commissioners had time to look over them? Do any of you have any questions, any changes? If not, I'll entertain a motion for approval. I'll make a motion to approve. Have a motion to second, approve. Second. Have a second from Patrick. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion <clears throat> does pass. The minutes are approved. We've now reached the citizen comment portion of the meeting. And this is, if you have any, I have a hard time explaining this, so bear, bear with me. This is not the regular agenda, but if you have public comment, anything that you need to talk about, and you fill out one of these cards, this is the time to come and speak on an item. But again, this is not an item on the agenda. And uh, is there anyone in the audience that just wants to have public comment? I see none. So we'll move to the regular agenda. The purpose is to hear all the pertinent testimony of those in support of and in opposition to the application before the commission. Tonight is the first of two public hearings required to approve a change in zoning. The commissioner also, commission also considers plat changes for new additions. The procedure for the public hearing tonight will be as follows. The public hearing will be open. Testimony will be heard in the following order. You'll have the staff, the applicant, the general public, and then those in support and in opposition will have the opportunity to speak. If you are part of a large group, we ask that you please select a spokesman uh, so that we don't hear the same thing over and over and also please limit it to five minutes at the most uh, I mean, we're not going to hold you definitely to that time, but approximately five minutes if you will When all sides have spoken the public hearing will be closed and uh, Further discussion will take place if it's needed if not we'll close it have a motion and vote on it The zoning request of the planning and zoning uh, then go to the city council, which will be November the 10th. They hear our recommendations and then at the city council meeting, they will make a determination whether they accept the zoning changes. We're now on item A of the agenda, and this is to consider the application of P22-12, the Mission Creek phase number five filed by Mission Creek Development Corporation, LLC, to plat approximately 9.697 acres of abstract 360A Jordan survey into 39 residential lots located south of Page Road along Mesa Drive. Angela will give a staff presentation at this time. 
Thank you, Mr. Noon. Uh, so as you had stated, the applicant is requesting to plat approximately nine acres into 39 single family residential lots. This is another phase of the current subdivision that's already out there called Mission Creek. It's phase five. Um, uh, staff does recommend approval of the request with the following requirements, uh, that the applicant provides a letter of credit for the infrastructure um, and an estimate. Um, once all those conditions are met, the plat would be considered approved. I'd be happy to answer your questions at this time. Any of the commissioners have any questions for Angela? What is the zoning for that? That area is in a plan development for single family. What's the minimum uh, required square footage? For homes? Yeah. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Hold on just one I moment. I believe, I want to say, I think it's 1,500. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? We'll not have a public hearing. This normally would be on a consent agenda, but since there are some stipulations, the motion does need to include the stipulations made by the Planning and Zoning Department. So at this time, I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve. I'll second. Do they need to state the motion with the? Yes, they do need to state the motion with the condition. The conditional approval. Yeah. With the conditional approval. Yeah, yeah conditional approval. Okay, we have the motion made with the stipulations. I'll second. With we the have a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Passes. Moving on to regular agenda item number B, consider application RP2208, Liberty Baptist Church edition, filed by Liberty Baptist Church to replant approximately 7.039 acres of lot two Block one and the three lots located at 1500 West Loop 281. Angela? Uh, thank you. Uh, so the applicant is requesting to replat approximately seven lots into three um, commercial lots. Uh, the applicant has not installed the required infrastructure um, or provided the estimate um, with, the pro uh, with the required security. So staff does make a recommendation for a conditional approval uh, with the following requirement that an estimate and security for the infrastructure um, be provided or they install the infrastructure. Once all those conditions are met, the plat would be considered approved. I'd be happy to answer your questions at that time. Angela, we don't have a public hearing on this, but I do have a speaker card. I believe the speaker card is for the um, the applicant. Okay, yeah. the applicant like to address this. Uh, you bet. Uh, good evening. Thank you all for your time, uh, and thank you for consideration of the replat of the property. Um, as far as the uh, estimate, did you receive the estimate? from our office earlier We today? have not. You have yeah. not. Can I, may I approach and provide it to you? Or? Um, you can, yes. Okay. So the, the first estimate is for the infrastructure for the water, sewer, uh, the, you know, the main utility extensions at the front of the property. The second estimate is for the sidewalk addition. Mm. So I don't know if, if that, uh, I guess my question would be if it's a conditional plat approval, what would our next step be or could we still be approved at City Council on the 10th? So this doesn't go to City Council, it just goes, at, you know, the Planning and Zoning Commission once they make a recommendation uh, to approve with the conditions, as long as the conditions are met, we would file the plat. Yeah, it'd be a ticket basically to administrative approval. Okay. Once perfect. you meet those conditions, then we'll sign off on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so would would the plat be recorded in the month of November or like what's the time frame then to be recorded because the infrastructure wouldn't be put in we've you know we provided the estimate and we'll provide a surety yeah. for once the work. Get, once we get mm -hmm. the surety then we can file the plat same yeah. day or next day okay perfect mm -hmm. we can do that um, if there are any other questions of us as the applicant be happy to answer them Okay, agenda item B will be just like agenda item A. It does not, it's not part of the public hearing, but somebody can make a motion with the same stipulation unless you have a question. Uh, since, it's, since it's presented, do we take that as a verbal from you guys that it's presented and it's, that part's met? 
The whole thing has not been met. We don't have the uh, security, um, and so the condition still applies. I mean, we have the estimate, um, but as long as he gives us the um, that security, if he gives it to us tomorrow, we'll be we'll file it the next day. So yes, so staff does still make a, the same recommendation that um, you know the condition that he provide the security, and as long as those conditions are met, uh, it'll be approved. I'll make a motion to approve with conditions as stipulated. We have a motion to approve with a stipulation so presented. Second? Second. I'll second. And a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Passes as stated. <clears throat> Regular agenda item number C. A public hearing will be held to consider application S2209 filed by Roderick Wildman requesting a specific use permit to allow for a restaurant with a drive through window in a general retail zoning district for lot 1A, New City Block 292, Longview Johnson Acreage, located at 1515 South Marbury Avenue here in Longview. Angela? Thank you. So the applicant is requesting a specific use permit to allow for a uh, restaurant with a drive-through window in general retail zoning district, or in their case, it is a restaurant with a gas station with a drive-through window in general retail zoning district. A specific use permit is required for drive-through windows within general retail zoning district to ensure no negative impact on surrounding properties. Uh, Mauberly is classified as a minor arterial roadway, which is appropriate for this type of use. Staff finds that the proposed zoning change is consistent with the future land use map um, and surrounding uses, therefore it does not constitute spot zoning. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. Any of the commissioners have a question at this point? Okay, is the applicant present? I have a speaker card, I believe. If you'd like to come forward and make your presentation, please. Hi, my name is Nick. Thank you for calling me here. Okay. Uh, so it's a, it's a gas station. We try to add, there's a two car mechanic shop in the back. We never used it. So we want to turn into a kitchen a and add a drive through in there because uh, in the past when we had a COVID, uh, a lot of restaurants, they're successful because of their drive through So we want to add drive through um, so we don't get any anything in the future. You know. Any of the commissioners have any questions of the applicant? Thank you. Appreciate you very Thank much. You. I will now ha open the public hearing. Is there anyone in the audience that'd like to speak in request in support of this request? I see none. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak in opposition? I see none. Any other questions, comments? Commissioners? None? If there's no additional questions or comments, I'll close the public hearing. I'll now entertain a motion. So moved. Have a motion for approval. Do second. I have a second? Second. Have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Angela, did you did you get it all? Yes, sir, I did. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, moving to regular agenda item number D. A public hearing will be held to consider application Z22-21, filed by Aaron... Arun Srinivasan. Okay. Requesting a rezone from plan development PD 15 to townhome <clears throat> TH zoning district for approximately 0.300 acres of abstract 258. The Rains Survey Track 2403 and 2501, Section 7, situated west of Patio Street, north of Greenleaf. Angela? 
Okay, thank you. Um, so as y'all may remember, uh, the applicant did come before the Planning and Zoning Commission maybe a couple of months ago uh, to rezone uh, the west portion of this property or the west part of this property, uh, which is already now zoned um, townhomes. Um, so he currently has under contract to purchase the sliver of property between him um, and the homes that face along Patio Street. Um, and he has come back to request the, a rezone to townhomes from PD 15 um, as stated you know it is consistent with the comprehensive plan and adjacent uses uh, therefore it does not constitute spot zoning I'd be happy to answer your questions at this time any questions of Angela if, they, I, were, if I recall the last time I may be wrong wasn't there, wasn't there something said about the drainage I think some of the neighbors were concerned like that, about the about drainage that? didn't they come in and say mm -hmm. something about that yes is that, and <coughs> of that um, it was to the west, and I believe some of the neighbors to the north. Yeah. yeah. Northwest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is to do an extension for backyards. Yeah. So if you look, I'll come back to this plan. Um, essentially, the plan is a little the same. Um, if you look on that arrow, that's where, that's where um, this sliver of property is. So the buffer is going to be there between the, the existing yeah. housing and the new yeah. housing. So they just have a larger backyard. Okay. Is the applicant present? Would you come forward, please, and state your name? See if they have any questions of you, please. Aaron, I'm sorry I mispronounced your name. That's all right, sir. Good evening, Commissioners, Angela, Michael, the staff. Um, thank you for your time. Yes, um, like Angela mentioned, uh, this little sliver of land uh, is adjacent to those patio homes that was owned by uh, Oak Forest Montessori School and uh, uh, the owners approached us uh, part of that previous zoning request we had since they don't have any use to it and uh, it kind of makes more sense for us to um, absorb it into the development clean it up and just kind of make it more safer for those neighbors back there okay any of the commissioners have any questions of Aaron? <clears throat> is there going to be uh, um, on that sliver of land is there going to be uh, a tree buffer, I guess, between the townhomes and then and then the neighborhood. That was one of the biggest concerns they have. Not necessarily a tree buffer, but there are a bunch of dead trees in there, and and it, which is a hazard right now for those homes back there. So uh, the plan would be, or the idea is, to clean it up and make it more safer for them. Any other questions? Thank you. I will now open the public hearing. Is there anyone that would like to speak in support of this request? If so, please come to the podium. I see no one. Anyone like to speak in opposition? I see one. No one. Any other questions, commissioners? If there's none, no additional questions or comments, I'll close the public hearing. I'll now entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Does pass. Okay, item number E, a public hearing will be held to consider application 7, I mean Z22-22, filed by BTO Properties, requesting a rezone from Agricultural A to Single Family 4 Zoning District for a portion of lots 1 through 10, Orem Edition, situated on the southwest corner of Yarborough Road and Harley Ridge Road. Angela? Thank you. Um Kind of like this case before, you have seen uh, this request as well before. Um, the applicant did rezone this property um, in 2020 to single family four. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission along with City Council approved the request. At that time, we didn't have an accurate survey that, provided, that was provided with the rezone request. 
Um, and so there was an assumed property um, boundary when we rezoned this property. Uh, but through the subdivision process, or what we call platting process, it was discovered that some of the areas within the platted subdivision uh, still retained that agricultural zoning designation. So this request is for the remainder of this subdivision to be zoned, rezoned SF4 so that it is consistent with the rest of the lots. Uh, staff finds that the proposed zoning change is consistent with the comprehensive plan and surrounding uses, therefore it does not constitute spot zoning. I'd be happy to answer your questions at this time. Any, any questions for Angela? They've already started construction on that, haven't they? Yes, on some of the lots. Okay. Yes, they have. Is the applicant present? Yes, Would you like to come forward, please? Sure. State your name. Hey, I'm doing this evening. I'm a brave norm, so kind of like Miss Angela already said, we rezoned this back in 2020. Is that right, Miss Angela? Yes, that's correct. So just the survey just wasn't quite correct. We didn't have one on file. Some of the boundaries just didn't meet up with what the city had on file with their city plat. Um, I have art, as you can see in the pictures, I've started a uh, construction on lots one through five. Three homes are already framed. About to actually do a one-stop inspection, so we'll be sheetrocking hopefully end of next week. And then obviously just the, the goal here is just to bring some nicer homes into the West Longview area for Pine Tree. So we just have three more lots to believe that that uh, zoning didn't get changed in. Commissioner, do you have any questions? I see none. So I will open the public hearing. Is there anyone that would like to speak in support? I see no one. Does anyone like to speak in opposition? Any additional questions or comments from the commissioners? So I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve as presented. Have a motion to approve as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Does pass. Okay, we are now to item F of the public hearing. A public hearing will be held to consider application Z22-23 filed by Oakland Heights Baptist Church requesting a rezone from office to general retail zoning district for a portion of lots one, two, three, and nine, block four, Legay Gardens, located at 1607 Judson Road. Angela? Thank you. The applicant is requesting to rezone a portion of Oakland Heights Baptist Church. So this portion is on the west side of Judson Road. Um, I think it's their, I believe it's their gym from office to general retail zoning district. Uh, places of worship are permitted by right in any zoning district. However, the applicant has stated that they plan to build a new facility and would like to market this property to as many potential buyers as possible. Uh, Judson Road is maintained by TxDOT and is classified as a principal arterial roadway. This type of use is appropriate along this roadway as long as access management is followed. Staff does find that the proposed zoning change is consistent with the surrounding uses to the north. Therefore, it does not constitute spot zoning. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. Any commissioners having any questions of the, Angela? Okay, is the applicant present or representative? If you are, please come forward, state your name. My name is Michael Cook. I represent Oakland Heights Baptist Church. Appreciate uh, the commissioners and Ms. Choi and her staff hearing our request and application. Our church family will be relocating on George Ritchie Road near Airline on 20 acres that we purchased there. And uh, we would like to have both sides of the street. I know we're just discussing one of those at this time to uh, move into one zoning where we don't have multiple zoning issues in general retail. As many of you are aware, five to 10 acre tracks are very rare in a fully developed downtown center of Longview. Um, we feel like that uh, certainly a five acre plus track does not fit for office. Um, there's tremendous development potential. It's very strong. And uh, we also feel like with the revitalization of Judson Road a little further up from us with a 
a house that was just removed and some multi-housing that's going in there that it would be consistent uh, potentially for redevelopment. We also believe that it would do nothing but increase property values in that area. When you have a multi-million dollar property, it's unlikely that uh, the, anyone that would purchase that would put anything less than top notch there. We also believe this will, for our church family, leave the door wide open for uh, another church to purchase the facility if that might work out as well. We do not believe that this is spot zoning as Mrs. Shoy just mentioned, and we do not believe this is a very unusual request in terms of its nature. Uh, our church family desires to be good neighbors and we have, we feel like, for 65 years at the corner of Eden Drive and Judson Road. Recently, one of our real estate committee members, Mr. Roy Metzger, who's present tonight, met and answered questions with the Tillwood Neighborhood Association. Uh, there were no reservation voiced at that meeting. We uh, believe that, I believe that the president of the Tillwood Homeowners Association is here tonight. We've also spoken with one of the residents from the Ramblewood Street, which is even further from our campus, uh, about some concerns that they had as well. So I'll answer any questions that you may have of me. Commissioner, do you have any questions? Mike? Hi, Mike. How you doing? So is it, it's a uh, sale, it's not a rent. You're not gonna rent it out, you're gonna sell it, right? No, ma'am, we're not gonna be renting the property. Does East Texas Dance Company know you're selling? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> they just don't have several million dollars. <laughs> gotcha. Any other questions? Mike, stand by because we'll probably have some questions okay. come up here in a minute. Okay, I'm going to, well, before I open the public hearing, Angela, tell us what general retail zoning is, please. Okay, so um, general retail kind of like what the name implies it is a retail type uh, zoning category um, a lot of retail type uses you could do an antique store um, you could do a drive-through um, restaurant a quick service restaurant um, you could have a sit-down restaurant that serves alcohol they would need to get a specific use permit um, you could do a pharmacy you could do um, you could do a grocery store um, you could do a hotel. Um, there are quite a few uses that are allowed in general retail, um, but they're your typical retail type uses that, uh, that are allowed in there. Okay. Okay, I'm now going to open the public hearing. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to support this request, please come forward, state your name. My name's Roy Metzger. I'm on the advisory committee for Oakland Heights Church, and I'm also a, uh, a resident of uh, Tealwood, uh, 317 Tealwood Drive. And uh, I'm in support of it because it, it's a, a good use. It, it has connectivity to other office facilities as well as general retail. and. Uh, its grandfathered use has uh, uh, resulted in the growth of the church and regrettably it's moved to north of town but uh, i think it'll be a good use and the money will be used to support the church and also i thought it was a great benefit because the uh, the property is currently not producing any tax income for the county or for the city and as a, a former uh, tax assessor in oregon I, I really appreciate that. So thank you. Uh, my understanding is that the church has voted to make this move, correct? <clears throat> That's what I understand, yeah. I wasn't here when they made that vote. Okay. I'm a new resident. My daughter lives here. And my wife told me I needed to move. So. Okay. Very good. <laughs> All right. Anyone have any questions? <clears throat> All right, is there any opposition to the request? If, pl if so, please come to the podium, state your name and address. I have a couple of cards here. Well, I didn't fill out a card. <laughs> uh, my name is Carla Hale. I'm the president of the Tillwood HOA. And just to clarify, 
uh, we did bring that up in discussion at our last meeting. Uh, was really brief no one really had any information other than they were trying to sell we don't have a problem with that we're just concerned as to what type of business would go in because on eden and on hoyt but eden's the more pass through street to fourth street and on to eastman road it is just a two-lane road so we're concerned about the traffic that's already pretty bad there high traffic going to work and, back and getting off work type stuff so uh, we do have some concerns as to what would go in there we're we're all for equality and everything but we want to make sure it's a good business that will uh, not take the the neighborhood value down because being near retail isn't always good for your home value so that's all i have to say one, one question real quick while you're here. Um, are y'all con more concerned about where the actual church is or where the family life is? That's really for both. It's really for okay. the more for the church, I guess. Okay. Uh, it uh, Because that's really more where Eden Drive is. That's so. kind of what I figured. Yeah. So. It, 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 I've been a, I was a realtor for like 20 years, and generally when you're around real retail issues, your housing value does diminish somewhat. Okay, is there any other opposition to this request? If so, please come forward, state your name. Hearing none, any additional questions or comments? If there's no additional questions or comments, I'll close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? A second. Like we have several seconds. Any other comments? <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposition? Does pass. Item number G, a public hearing will be held to consider application Z22-24 filed by Oakland Heights Baptist Church requesting a rezone from office and single family to general retail zoning district for approximately 3.23 acres of abstract 113 j jackson survey track 55 section 3 and lots 1 and 2 block 1 glenhaven edition located at 1600 judson road angela thank you um as as you stated uh the applicant is requesting a rezone from office and single family to uh, to General Retail uh, Zoning District located at 1600 Judson Road. So we are talking about the east side of Judson Road. Um, and as stated in my previous staff report, um, places of worship are permitted in any zoning district by right. Um, however, the applicant does plan to build a new facility and so they're trying to market this property. Although there is general retail along this corridor, uh, the future land use map does support office and low density residential at this location. Uh, Judson Road uh, is a textile maintained facility and is a principal arterial roadway. So it does support general retail type uses as well as office type uses. Staff does find the proposed zoning change. It is consistent with surrounding uses. Uh, therefore, it does not constitute spot zoning. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. Any questions for Angela? So Angela, say the property sells and uh, somebody wants to put apartment complex up. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? It is. Okay. Apartments are allowed in general retail. Okay. <clears throat> Do y'all do any kind of traffic study or anything on the front end? So it, it would depend. It would depend on what type of development it is, um, whether or not our traffic engineering division would require a, tra a traffic impact analysis. And it looks like some of these, you know, some of this butts up right against some single family residences. I mean, the, the one on the west side that kind of kind of fed in, mm -hmm. you know, real, real well. But the back end of this property is, is really up against some properties. That, yes, that yeah. is correct. Yeah. Yeah. There's both single and, and mm -hmm. multi. Yeah, right there. Yeah. And do we, on general retail, what is the buffer? Uh, it's a minimum 10 feet. <laughs> um, and then depending on if they go multi-story, um, it would be an additional five feet for every story, uh, but it is a minimum 10 foot. 
with a six foot solid wooden fence. Does the applicant have anything to add? If so, please come forward. He says he has none. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the public hearing. Is there anyone that would like to speak in favor of the request? Seeing none, do we have anyone who would like to speak in opposition? Go ahead. My name is Kendall Land. I live at 13 Ramblewood Drive. I'm a pastor here in town at First Presbyterian. I've been here about eight years. Uh, before I get started, if I may, uh, the residents of Tealwood and uh, Ramblewood that are here that are not in favor, would y'all please raise your hand so the commission can see you? Thank you. And we also have four of our uh, residents in Ramblewood who spoke to me today who are unable to come for health and work reasons. Um, to begin with, I was, I believe, that neighbor who spoke with the pastor, I think, um, and I reached out to him for that conversation. And what needs to be clarified is that I told him very clearly I was not in favor of this rezoning request. Um, Angel's been very helpful with helping me understand all the rezoning codes because I'm way out of my water here. Uh, but if you would, could you go back please to the first, uh, uh, the, if you, well that's a great place to start. So on the original request, I think that was submitted, one of the reasons for wanting to get the rezone was so that it would be more consistent with the properties that is around it. Yes, not spot zoning, but if you look, general retail is the minority, an extreme minority of the properties around this residential area that you see on that map. And then onto the next map that Angela showed you as well. Um, this is from the comprehensive plan that talks about having the buffer zone of office space near residential areas. And if that were to become general retail, that buffer zone that was recommended in the future use plan of the comprehensive plan goes away. Um, and primarily, the biggest concern that we have is we don't know what's going in this place. General retail, again, as Angela pointed out, it's pretty all-encompassing. It's the least restrictive of all the zoning measures. So it could be the most wonderful thing that Longview has ever seen that goes into that place that makes all of our houses and our living escalate through the roof. Chances are that's not going to happen because we have no idea what might go in there. Um, and it would be wonderful, I agree, if another church were to go in there, but we don't have to rezone anything for another church to go in there. So I hope that the commission will not grant this uh, rezoning request and that it will keep it the residential zone that it is now because even though um, you can't see Ramblewood on this map. If you're not familiar with the area, that road right there, Leisure Lane, is the only entrance and exit into our neighborhood. And so every day, whether we wanted to or not, we would be confronted with whatever goes into that space. We would have no other choice but to deal with it every day. And so I hope that the commission will not approve this rezoning request. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak against it? Please come forward. State your name and your address. My name is Doreen Kepke and I live uh, in... Get closer to the mic, please. Okay, I'm short. Oh, pull it down. <laughs> there you go. My name is Doreen Kepke. I did not fill out a card. I live at 5 Ramblewood Drive and my entrance in and out of my home is Leisure Lane. And if you'll put that other map back up, I want you to be aware that that creek or drainage ditch, whatever you want to call it, is part of that property. Do you see where I'm talking about? Can you see it? Okay. I just want you to be aware because there's a lot on one side that's vacant of the creek and I guess it belongs to the church and then all of this property is going to be rezoned what's going to happen to whatever is going to drain into that ditch that's going down the road thank you we don't want it thank you 
thought. Wait, wait till you get the mic, please. One more thought. Uh, Carla Hale again at, out of Tillwood. Uh, Tillwood also is that Leisure Lane is the only access we have. We are uh, into our neighborhood also. But my only thought uh, when you mentioned uh, about other properties or the entities that go, could go into those, you mentioned apartment complexes. We have enough. We don't need any more apartment complexes on Eden at that end. We got enough. Um, they're, um, even though these would be new ones that would go in or they're going to remodel the church to be an apartment complex, the two that we have are declining. One is, has been in really bad shape, and I understand it's been recently bought and it's being redone, but um, we don't need any more multifamily issues going on. There's not enough. The road is just not going to take it. It is difficult in the mornings to get out on Eden at times. But. Well, I have a question for you because I'm going to mention if it was available to put apartment complex there, but general retail. So what would you rather see there? General retail, apartment complex, or do you just not want the church to sell? No, I, no, I'm not. Uh, <clears throat> it's not my thought to deny someone the ability to sell their property. I understand they're moving to a new location. I know of lots of churches that have done that. We just are concerned as to what type of retail will go in there. We want it to be a good retail if it does, uh, where uh, not um, where bad elements might come in and walk the streets because we do have some of that already. Um, we're not. I'm, I'm, our our neighborhood is not really opposed to the to it. We understand that's just the way of the world. Changes happen every day. But we're just concerned, especially about another apartment complex. But we want it to be a good business that would go in there, that would be vital. But we are concerned about the traffic. Because I understand there's been a big wreck there at Eden and Judson right now. So. And that's all. Is your, is your concern more the depth down Eden to where leisure? I mean, if, if there was something that was more front facing on Judson, you know, kind of where the. the that is well that would make that would make uh, better sense not to involve some more traffic coming in and out of that uh and it's really it's that vacant lot there that's as i understand you can't build on it anyway is that floodplain because it's a floodplain yes, yes there yeah. is some floodplain there so i mean <clears throat> most people are not going to build on a floodplain you know it's, so that would help that issue but still depending on what traffic's um issues come out of the new owners or buildings there um i don't see the city enlarging eden driver we hope not i mean you know that's the major undertaking financially plus the time it would take to do that so just uh, we're more concerned about the apartment complex that you mentioned <laughs> we, we would prefer not another one at that location so thank you very much i'll try thank not to ask i won't ask any more questions <laughs> Anyone else in the audience like to speak in opposition? Any other questions or comments? Angela, can you recap what it's zoned now and what can go there now? So okay. everyone hears it. <clears throat> yes. So currently the property is zoned office and single family too. Um, so a church is allowed by right in any zoning district. So um, churches or schools, um, so a school could go there um, and they are allowed by right in any zoning district. Um, but other than that, um, you know, that church, it's, it straddles two zoning districts and so, um, you know, they would have to rezone, something would have to rezone that single family portion in order for like an office to go there or anything like that. Um, but right now a church is allowed by right in this zoning district and the property is zoned single family to and office. You know, I'm just thinking out loud here because he, some comments that gentleman from the church had made earlier with regard to, the, uh, I'm, a, I'm guessing assumed monies you'll get for it and, and, and we were talking about to the west, that, that portion earlier. But if, if that applies to what you're, to the church itself, just looking at what's going for what in the city of Longview, 3.23 acres, it's not gonna be several million dollars. And I'm just, I'm just trying to wrap my head around, well, who could afford to do that? I mean, I think the win-win the for everyone would be if another church went there. That would be great. And then everyone's happy. 
if not, I couldn't imagine getting several million dollars for lots to build single family residence on. It just, the numbers don't jive. You just couldn't make any money off of it. No builder would touch that. And then office space, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I'm just thinking out loud and I see and hear both sides of it, you know. It'd be I, difficult I, to sell it. I would be concerned if I lived so. there. I, I would definitely be concerned. But I'm also, you know, I don't want to go against God either. <laughs> that was humor. Did you get them? <laughs> <laughs> so for the church, I mean, it's kind of a kind of a rock and a hard place from my perspective. I don't know. It's one of those tough ones where you don't want to, anyone to be hurt by it. You know, I don't know. Well, we've also seen a lot of sales that you know a, a future purchaser was buying a property with a specific use in mind and the sale or the purchase of the property was subject to rezoning and that allowed everyone to see more what would be there as well i do have one question of the applicant on the on hoyt drive it also says those three lots are owned by oakland heights baptist church and uh, it looks like from there and I apologize, I didn't drive Hoyt, um, but it looks like from the aerial that there were either single family on those. Are those truly owned by the church? And those would continue to stay single family or multifamily or whatever they are? I believe so. I mean, I think the pastor could answer that, but um, they did not request that those three lots be rezoned, but the church does own them. On the, on the three lots, we have uh, a buyer for those and uh, that will stay as single family residences. Okay. Okay. There's a creek behind us and uh, Ms. Choi has talked to us about that portion potentially being deeded over to the city. Um, that really is not probably gonna be in the plans for any developer. And Mr. Jones, I would disagree with the Frank Cheney, who's the leading commercial realtor in East Texas, has told us that the market value would be much different than you're suggesting. But you may be a realtor, I don't for, know. No, for the 3.23 acres? That is correct. Actually, for the entire five point something acres. What's the What's the other, uh, across the street? Yes. Are y'all gonna try to sell them together? They are being marketed together, that's correct. And I apologize, I didn't know we were having a hand vote for numbers. We could have brought several hundred people tonight, but <laughs> we didn't know that that was kind of what this was based upon. So I apologize. I think we could have had a pretty significant showing. My concern really is, is like everybody's talked about, is just how deep down Eden the property goes. And I understand what you're saying as far as some of that floodplain. Well, but I mean, I mean, the creek alone is going to be a much larger than a 10 foot. The city of Longview maintains that, and that's a massive barrier in itself. And obviously, any development's going to be facing Judson Road. That's where the value is toward Judson Road. So, again, we are doing what our real estate people has asked us to do. And man, I'm just here taking the bullets. <laughs> Angela, on that, you know, where it is saying floodplain, under the, the rules, nothing can be built in the floodplain? Um, so it would depend if it was floodplain or floodway. So nothing can be built in the floodway. Um, in the floodplain, you can build as long as it's, I believe, two feet above the finished floor elevation. Improvements can yeah. be done, yeah. Yeah. elevation certificates yeah. and flood studies and things. I think Any the, other questions? Or comment? I think the price point that it's at is going to knock out a lot of people that some people think might be riffraff going in there because I think the price that you had stated is roughly what it's going to be because it's commercial property on Judson. Um, right. With single family, I don't, I don't see a developer knocking all that stuff down um, to do single families because it would be pretty pricey, but other things I, I right. would see. And again, our church family's position is we want to be good neighbors. We wouldn't, would not want to sell to somebody that's going to hurt anyone in our neighborhoods. We're here to serve the people of Longview, and we, but we can't control necessarily what a developer puts in. 
but the city of Longview has guidelines and regulations as to what can go in and cannot. So once we sell that, we would no longer have that type of control of the property. It's just in the best interest of our church to have it zone retail, and that's what our request is. Any other questions? Any other comments? Anyone else going to speak in opposition? Yes, sir? Can I come back? You may come back. Can I also come back? <laughs> okay. You want to stay? Until I close the public hearing, you can all speak. I think the primary thing that's come up that is the most concern for us as the people who live in that area is, and it's exactly what was mentioned earlier, we don't know what's going in. And I, I know it's not uncommon for someone to have a sale lined up for the buyer then to come in and make that request of the rezone. Uh, I would love to trust that the church will do what's in best interest for their neighbors. I've worked in churches for over 20 years Churches want to do that all the time. We do not always do that. Sometimes we do what's best for us. And so I would encourage you to consider that if someone is a serious buyer, they understand how this process works. If they are, gonna, if they are used to plopping down $3 million for a piece of property, they know how planning and zoning works. They will come to you and they will make that request. And that will be a good neighbor to have. Uh, but we don't know that going into it. Uh, so that was something I would urge you to consider uh, in your time because that is the biggest concern that I've heard from our neighbors in Ramblewood. We just don't know what's coming in. Um, if we did know what was coming in, we would feel a lot more comfortable about it. Um, and that would the, be the biggest thing uh, for the concerns of the, of the neighborhood, I think. Any other comments or questions? Pastor, do you want to come back or? I'll leave it in the Lord's hands. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir? Uh, thank you. My name is David Orban, and I'm a resident on Ramblewood, 7 Ramblewood, and uh, as has adequately been presented, I would be concerned primarily about the, the traffic on Eden, how that would affect uh, the residential area. Would there be, uh, if it's sold as a, uh, for retail, would there be entrances and exits? Could that be controlled in any way uh, by the commission? to have all entrances on Judson rather than off of Eden? So most likely, no. Our traffic engineer would look at the, uh, look at the site plan, uh, look at the plans submitted. Judson Road is a tech stop roadway, and so limited access would be allowed onto Judson Roadway. So actually, um, probably less driveways on Judson and more onto Eden and Hoyt. And uh, a little tongue-in-cheek, uh, I, <clears throat> I appreciate the church's predicament, but maybe you got the cart before the horse in uh, before purchasing and moving, you probably should have sold the property and had the money in hand to do that would be my, th <laughs> would be my thought. Um, I'm a retired pastor, I've dealt with this in the past as well. Uh, either that or tell your congregation uh, tithing has just gone up to 20 percent. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments or questions? So, no. so as a reminder, this is not a, a be-all to end-all. The, the uh, a proposed buyer or, or, or uh, can come back and, and revisit this again. Correct. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. yeah. If, if you choose to not take action on it, and and you know, there's a couple of different ways. I was just thinking, you know, based on the comments that were made, uh, an alternative action, not what they've proposed, but based on kind of a compromise, if you will, would be to, uh, you know, not rezone the area that's that lot in the creek, leave it as single family, 
and then the area that is single family too that's the current church the commission can recommend a lesser zoning and could recommend to rezone that to office so that it would all be consistent and it could be sold and done something with other than a church if there is some reservation about the retail there that would still allow them to have a recommendation for something there if that's if that were an option of the that would be an option for the commission me personally i'd be more inclined to do that than to i mean i i'm always trying to put myself in both both sides shoes whatever if i lived in leisure lane how would i feel about this <laughs> off of eden now we're hearing about the driveways more more than likely going on to eden and then you know i see the church's stance too they're wanting to uh be able to to uh, promote this property um advantageously of course for the future um but i just yeah i'm, I'm pro building and, and everything pro construction and sale and all that but at the same token these homeowners you know i wouldn't be too happy either yeah that that would doing kind of that alternative that's why i asked if it's a, if this is a be all to end all if this, sure. okay th then it's done and we're and we're not going to revisit again no, i would much could. rather see a proposed buyer come in and go okay we have the kind of money to visit with the homeowners and go here's what we're proposing we want to get it changed you know and and go with that i think yep. that's the lesser of the evils from my from my comments you can probably tell i, I kind of feel the same way and we've seen that before and you know it once you have a plan in place it usually works out yeah. and I'm, I'm i'm definitely like you i'm for building i'm for progress i want to see the church succeed where it's going and i want to see this this property developed um you know and i and i don't like folks that just don't want to see anything developed there or you know something like that and and I don't think that's the case I think we have some legitimate concerns on traffic and where entrances would be and how far down this this zoning would be stretching um, and I you know I, I, I feel like anybody that's gonna be a buyer you know would have an idea of what they're going to do and could reapproach us and you know hopefully they would work it out with you know have some meetings with the with the residents and you know if it's a viable proposal and you know it's not really going to you know cause a lot of traffic issues would i wouldn't look too kindly on the residents you know just stopping any progress but i don't think that's the case here you know i think i think we could look at it when that occurs and we'd be very open to the rezoning that everybody's comfortable with it could be a contingency purchase you know mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would uh, just comment. Um, I like Michael's idea. I believe that may satisfy both parties. I, I, if if you if we go ahead and move it to 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 business or office, um, does that represent to a potential buyer that you know there is movement on the deal and you know um, things can get done to help you know satisfy you know um, an idea? Um, so I don't know if we just table it or if you. Have to, or if we can do what can Michael yes, said, yeah, how does his thoughts on yeah. that? Our uh, real estate representation is in South Carolina and could not be here tonight. Uh, it is my understanding that before anyone could build, they must get and go through the application process with the city of Longview. Traffic studies, site plans have all got to be approved. So for us to be able to market the church, it being general retail now, it will still go through that screening process before it can be permitted. So that would all be taken care of in that phase. And again, prolonging that, and it hurts us when we market the church for people to say, well, that's not general retail. So we close a lot of lookers, potential buyers, by not having that rezoned. So would, 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 that, be our, would that be our desire? Absolutely not. <clears throat> but no one's mentioned that this has to go through stringent permitting. And so if there's traffic studies, <clears throat> issues with egress, all those things can be worked out in the permitting phase. We're talking about here zoning for what potential purchasers can and cannot do. And so that would be our request based upon Ms. Choi's recommendation that 
the commissioners approve this request as the Oakland Heights Baptist Church has asked of you? I didn't make a recommendation. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just to be clear, you know, I'm, yeah. again, I think it's it's worth worth mentioning. I think anyone that's going to have that kind of money for that, I mean, it's a great location. It's great land. Right, but, but what does that have to do with the rezoning? Can, can I, I finish? You, can I, mean, I finish you're, this? You're talking can about I, the value, but what does that have to do with the rezoning? I don't understand. Let me let me finish. Maybe okay. you will. Okay. Maybe you will understand, Pastor. What's the worst of two evils here? Us us doing this and and putting. The homeowners at risk or you may be not being able to market the property the way you want to anyone with that kind of money I mean it's it's it's, it's either gonna be one or two things in my opinion I don't know I may be totally wrong um, you're either gonna have another church going there or you're gonna have someone a big company a corporation that's gonna come in and has the big money those these little things don't phase them they're gonna look at this and go okay that's just a matter before we purchase it we're gonna put a contingent offer in we're gonna say we're gonna give you a four million whatever the number is that you've got in your mind we're, we'll give you four million but it's based on us being able to get it approved then they're gonna come back just like you've done and we're gonna hash it out and the neighbors are either gonna be upset and we revisit this again or they're gonna say we think that's a great organization they've been good neighbors in the past around the country to different neighborhoods where they've gone in whatever I just think that it's in my opinion somebody can hone in if you want I think it's the 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 the, the worst of two evils is putting the neighborhood at risk of once it's rezoned it opens it up to a lot more things that can go in there I don't think it's gonna hurt your marketing honestly for that property so that's just my opinion. When you, when you say it's putting them at risk, exactly what is it? What what's risking? Can you name again? Can we address that again? What types of business can go in there? Uh, yes. So grocery stores, um, your typical retail apartments, like Mr. Uh, O'Rear had said. Um, so what else did I say? Um, you could do restaurants like quick service fast food restaurants you could do sit down uh, sit down restaurants um, that can serve alcohol but they do need to come back for a specific use permit um, a lot of retail type uses I think I said a grocery store a hotel um, yeah so okay so use either of those examples say a grocery store goes in there the amount of traffic that's gonna be on that two-lane road on Eden that would be a little bit overwhelming but uh, how would that be approved if the traffic study? I mean, they would never get permitted if the traffic would not be approved I don't by think the city of Longview. So depending on the type of use, not everything requires a traffic impact analysis um, or what you're saying, a traffic study. Um, so it just depends on the type of use and the intensity, whether it would require a traffic impact analysis right. um, by our traffic engineering department. Just so, 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 okay, and, Michael, your opinion. Uh, I want to build an apartment complex there with... 300 units what's the feasibility of that it's it's yeah I mean from a from a land use standpoint I mean if they can fit it on there now when you start looking at traffic impact and that's one of the key differences between office and general retail is the traffic generation office is going to generate less traffic that's why you see office as transitional general retail is meant for those areas that can handle traffic as Angela stated before Judson Road is a, a major arterial that can handle that but can the side roads that are that are going to that accept some of that so that's when we when we look at impact and intensity and density all of that factors into offices is, is less intense than the general retail and so yes as stated staff is going to review that if if you were to rezone it to general retail we're going to review that but we're not going to have an opportunity to say no outside of floodplain issues uh, some minor parking calculations, landscaping calculations, as long as they meet all the administrative rules, um, they'd be able to build. We're not going to be able to screen it for uses. And I think the uses are the, are the things that were voiced as concerns. And we already have two places to come out on TxDOT approved on the campus. So it's unlikely they're going to take those away. 
as it, as it sits grandfather but I think what we're hearing is that there's a thought that somebody would purchase the property and tear it down it's kind of what the feeling I'm getting and so that would be a blank slate we would look at everything as new so all the existing driveways curb cuts on all the roads would be kind of washed out with that and we would look at it needing to be compliant with all of our, our regulations Any other comments or questions? Mike, you have any other comments? I think if the if the council will not um, or the commissioners will not adopt it as the request is made, we're probably going to withdraw the request. I don't think the church would be interested at this point in anything other than general retail. Thank I you. Marketing it is one property both sides y east yes. and west yes would so, the church consider breaking it up um that would certainly not be our preference it could still be marketed that way pursuant to um like what they could say on LoopNet or coldwell banker that it has the option to change I, so anything can be marketed i would just yield to a man that's an expert in that area mm -hmm. who says this needs to be done so i'm just yeah. bringing that application gotcha any additional comments or questions we'll close the public hearing at this time and i'm going to entertain a motion and please make a motion of some type so we <laughs> so moved. Motion, to motion to approve you have a motion to approve here second and i have a second all in favor say yes 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 all opposed say no no, no. Can we, get a we need hand? a yeah. hand all in favor raise your hand all opposed split draw straws <laughs> doesn't care so have you got the vote yes okay yes sir all righty thank you all for it for that and all of the comments that were made for this so it really did not pass and it really did not fail correct it does not go with yeah. a recommendation for approval from PNC that's correct okay so they can go to City Council and get it approved or so they know they could it'll go to the city council <clears throat> and it'll they'll state what our recommendation is or wasn't requires a, what requires a majority. okay i'm going to move to regular agenda item h is that what we're to i think that is correct a public hearing will be held to consider application z22-25 filed by Jess White requesting a rezone from multifamily MF3 to single-family SF1 zoning district for approximately 5.017 acres of abstract 258 PP range survey track 601 section 9 situated on the north side of Spring Hill Road and west of McCann Road. Angela? Thank you. So the applicant is requesting to rezone from multifamily seen here in the pink uh, to single family one uh, located on the north side of Spring Hill Road. Um, the property in 2008 was apparently originally rezoned um, from ag to multifamily three. Uh, however, the current owner is requesting uh, to rezone to single family in order to build a single family home on this property. Staff finds the proposed zoning change is consistent with surrounding uses. Therefore, the request does not constitute spot zoning. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. Any questions, the commissioners? What does the GR stand for with the properties next to that? Uh, general retail. General retail. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. You can't build a single family in multifamily zone? No, you cannot. No. Any other questions of Angela? Is the applicant present? Would you please come forward, state your name? 
Hello, my name is Jess White, and I'm the owner of this property. It is currently zoned, like they said, multifamily. And as you can see, the majority of it is in a flood zone, which would make building multifamily a little bit difficult. Multifamily also doesn't really fit the area. Uh, this is mainly A-plus houses, um, and I don't think multifamily would be very fitting for this area. It's also just for me and my family, we want to build a house on it, and it's five acres. There's also a right-of-way that goes through. It splits it right in the middle. It's a major electrical right-of-way. And so we're going to build a house on the, non the non-flood plain area for our family to live in. So that's the request. So your plans are to build a private residence for yourself? That is correct. Okay. You have any questions of either the staff or the applicant? Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll now open the public hearing. Is there any one in the audience in support of this? If so, please come to the podium. <clears throat> State your name and address, please. My name is Randall Pearson. I'm a private citizen residing at 4021 Vintage Trail directly across from this request and um, we would see it as positive it appears to be more in keeping with the surrounding area and uh, we, f we would feel it'd be positive for um, reasons of noise traffic and just general value of property in this area so we would request approval any questions for mr pearson thank you Anyone like to speak in opposition? I see none. Any further questions? I will close the public hearing and entertain a motion. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Okay, Angela, if you can give us an update for City Council action on previous zoning. Thank you. All items that were presented to City Council were approved, um, including two annexations, which y'all didn't hear um, because it has to go before City Council, but there were two um, annexations that were presented uh, to City Council, one on Smelly Road and then one um, in our South Business Park along Eastman Road off of Neiman Marcus Parkway, and both of those were approved by City Council. Okay. I'm going to adjourn the meeting at this point. Thank you all. Thank you.